Today is actually the first day back into my third semester of nursing school and already there's like a ton of homework that's already due and it's like oh shoot I gotta get going I'm a student again. We only had a week of break so it wasn't much of a break but I had time to kind of rejuvenate not really. Now we have so much work to do and I just want to show you guys how I actually study for nursing school and show you guys how I was actually able to go from a C to a A in chronic. So stay tuned. So I was struggling in the beginning of the semester. I think I believe I got a D on my first exam, I'm not gonna lie. And um, on my paper, I got an F. Yep, I was struggling. <laughs> But I went to tutoring and um, I dug myself out of the dirt, literally, and I figured out how I could improve my grade. And thank God for my tutoring instructor. She, he has shown me so many different tips and tricks and study, uh, study tactics that can help me. And I'm pretty sure that they can help you in regards to studying for a nursing school. All right, uh, stay tuned and I'll show you guys how I study for nursing. So this is a sample of my notes from last semester. I know it looks super crazy, but it's colorful and I like color and it makes me actually kind of remember it a little, you know, a tad bit more. I remember more so how it looked and the placement of it when I'm taking an exam and I could be like, oh, I remember it was under the green section. So I kind of go through that in my brain when I'm taking an exam. See how I have different um, diseases or issues within the GI category. For example, in one column, we have the inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, right? We also have another inflama inflammatory bowel disease, which is ulcerative colitis. And then we have diverted colitis, peptic ulcer disease. And the last one is colorectal cancer. These are all relatable. Um, we learn them together and in the same lecture, so therefore I put them under GI, right? So I put them all next to each other, I line them up in columns, and then I separate them in rows by the actual topic that we're gonna discuss for that specific disease. So the first row, we're going to talk about the etiology. What causes it? What is the pathophysiology behind that disease? Um, so that way, you know, we can't really uh, get down to actually understanding the mechanisms of Crohn's disease if I don't really know the pathophysiology behind it. So I put that in that category. I also put the risk factors modifiable and non-modifiable. So modifiable, the things that we can change and non-modifiable, the things that we can't change. And I kind of do that for every single one of these in this entire row, as you can see. And then I go down one, and then I separate the other section into clinical manifestations. What are the clinical manifestations or signs and symptoms of these five diseases? Um, so for example, you know, they all are going to pretty much experience some type of diarrhea, GI issues, obviously GI. So, but then I kind of highlight the ones where there's something different about it and I should really pay attention to that one because it's somewhat different from the other one. So for example, for ulcerative colitis, um, I bolded this because it says 10 to 20 liquid watery bloody mucus or pussy stools a day, right? And then that's different from Crohn's disease because you know, Crohn's disease, you're going to see non-bloody stools day uh, per day, and they may be soft and semi-liquid cobblestone appearances compared to, you know, bloody mucus or pussy stools. So those are completely different. I bolded the two, so that way when I'm reading them, I'm like, okay, they're totally different. They're in different rows. Um, you know, like the placement of where they are is going to sit in my brain. The bolded is going to sit in my brain. The fact that they are you know, they have different types of diarrhea or liquidy stools, like that's also going to sit in my brain. So um, I think that's really, really, you know, that's been really helping me comparing them all together 
and then differentiating them all together. Thus, not learning them separately, but learning them together, making it so much easier. Oh my God, this saved my life. So going down, let's go down to medical management. So what does you know, what does the doctor do? What are, what are the diagnostics? What are the surgeries? You know, the therapies, drugs, all that, like things that, you know, not so much in our scope of practice really is more so like on the medical physician side, but it's still something that we should know because we're going to be either assisting in these areas or we're going to still be playing a role, just may not be the entire role, but we still need to know this information, right? So the medical management um, for Crohn's disease may be, let's talk about um, B12 injections um, and liquid vitamin supplements to give them. Uh, the physician may be prescribing those medications, right? But we will definitely be uh, giving them to, um, to the patient and teaching them. So I kind of keep it all on the same level. Like, so when I'm reading them and comparing them, all the surgical management is in one area. All the drug, so we may have to do a colectomy, right? Um, maybe for colorectal cancer, we might have to also do a colectomy, right? So I kind of underline them. I try to keep it concise. I try to keep it relatable. So for nurse management, right? So we're going to be talking about the assessments. Um, we're going to be talking about the vital signs, um, what kind of changes of the vital signs should we be aware of and what are considered urgent. Um, we also are going to talk about what nurses should just be aware of when it comes to a patient with this disease. Be looking at vital signs. Vital signs for number one, of course. You know, um, Number two, we're going to consider nutritional intake. I's and O's, we're going to, you know, assess for the fluid and electrolyte status. But, you know, you get the you get the jazz. Um, this is nurse management assessments pretty much going across the board. Um, and yeah, moving on to nursing interventions. Uh, so this is more so talking about the actions that we're going to take place, like what how to give the medication and what kind of medication we will be giving and kind of like, how are we gonna be teaching our, our patients um, to take this medication or what to do when they actually get uh, sent home? And now they're our outpatient uh, patients. So it's kind of like, how do we educate and take care of our patients as nurses? Um, how do we intervene uh, the care? So, so for example, um, you know when to call nine one one. Um, you know when is it important to call nine one one? When is it in, important to call our provider? Um, because we need to inform our patients the difference between the two and when they should seek help and when it is actually like an emergency. So I think those are important, uh, especially for NCLEX, especially for your exams, to know the difference between when to call a provider and when to call nine one one, especially when educating our patients for sure. Um, and then also like, you know, uh, if we should administer IV fluids, right? Um, should we provide a nasogastric tube and how and what level of, of the nasogastric tube? So we can get into detail with this, you know, it's very important. So, um, you know, right here for, um, I had to scroll all the way up to see like what column I'm in, but diverticulitis, um, yeah, so for example, for diverticulitis, this row, or sorry, this column, um, you know, it gets into a little bit more detail saying nasal gastric tube to low intermittent suctioning, right? G gastric decompression decreases gastric motility and allows bowel to rest until inflammation decreases. Right, so you can really give your explanation if you don't understand it or if you think you really need more studying about it, add that definition in there, look in the book and add all that information inside of your notes. So that way you take all your lecture notes all, and then all your book notes and form them into this document right here. And, the, and then you just print this out or you can leave it on the computer, it doesn't matter, PDF form, whatever. 
and you and you study it until you can't <laughs> and literally all your information is right here and it's just the greatest thing honestly it's so super organized um you can highlight you can move things over you can comp compare contrast whatever and i do this for pretty much everything uh, i did this for coronary artery disease and chronic stable angina it looks a little bit different but hey add your own flavor to it you know like I've added some little boxes, whatever makes you actually, you know, remember this stuff. As long as it's in this organized format, do it. It, it works, man. Like I have gotten A's on my two exams because of this. Like I wasn't doing too well in the beginning, but thank God that I found this way because I have, I have turned around my grade. I have gone to a C to a A in, in chronic, which is amazing because they flood you with information so yeah that's about it um i pretty much like accepted the fact that i was going to get a c in my chronic class like i was like this is so hard there's so many you know diseases that i need to learn and there's so much information that i i cannot uh you know obtain all this information it's it's too much so in the back of my mind like i kind of gave myself a a poor grade like I was like I'm just gonna get a C forget it but like I shouldn't have that mindset you know I should like kind of shoot for an A or actually try to put it on a board or something like or and maybe write in my journal like I should I, I deserve an A I can get an A but bro that was hard like it was difficult but anyways like getting a tutor really helped me as you can see like you know I went from a C to an A in that class and I feel like if I can get through it, I know that you guys can get through it. Um, hopefully that was super helpful. It helped me for sure. Um, like add pictures to it, add your own flair to it, highlight it, whatever makes you remember um, that information, because it is a lot of information, um, put it in there, put it in that formatting, you know, make sure it's still in those columns and in those rows, but still add in your own information to like, you know help out sometimes i would even take my book right i would even take my book and um go through the reading and highlight additional information that helped me like understand the material and then add that into the into my notes and that was that made it a lot easier actually for sure i pretty much need to listen to um something in different ways i need to read it in different syntaxes in different formats i need to look at pictures like i don't remember things just by looking at pictures or i just don't remember things just by reading books i kind of need like a mixture of everything in different formats i need all of it <laughs> give me everything you got and just throw it at me and then maybe like i'll just catch whatever <laughs> so i need the book in front of me i need youtube videos in front of me i need my lecture in front of me like i need a lot so I kind of get all those resources and throw them into these notes. And then when I share them with my friends, they're like, whoa, these are amazing. They're everything that I need to know. I'm like, yeah, because your girl did the most. <laughs> so I hope this is very helpful for you guys. Like, I mean, it takes time. It takes a long time, but I, I know for a fact that you guys will definitely, you know, if you guys take the time for it, you guys will do great. Um, just a uh, failure is not an option unless you make it an option like I did in the beginning, but I changed that thought around. But I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!